Yes, the fedora wearing John Hudson comes in to give us a breakdown of everything that is happening in the UFO world as we continue on to ask, you know, who, what, where, when, why, and how. It's been a busy week this week, by their uh, fedora. Yeah, man, I got, I got to admit, I, you know, I'm, honestly, the problem I had today was that I just got, I got so overwhelmed by this one guest that, like, I, I didn't have time to, to, I got, I got sucked into it so bad um, that, uh, you know, I mean, man, that, that, that guest just blew me away. So, so I'm, I'm a little, a little shallow on topics tonight, but luckily, yeah, it was a crazy week. So it shouldn't be any kind of problem at all because there's so much, so much nutty stuff going on. But, um, but, you know, one of the things I, I wanted to, I wanted to draw some attention to was um you know was i i don't know how many of you are are, are familiar we've, we've talked before about christopher sharp um he uh he's an editor for the liberation times and like he's done some writing and he basically um came out with another article and um it's getting a lot of really really good uh good feedback on it he's getting a lot of really good dialogue on it and what i want to point out is that you know this is someone who wasn't doing a whole lot of writing before has basically come out now with two articles in the past couple months. Both have actually made quite an impact. But here's the thing. They're starting conversations and they're getting us to all have debates about things that we're not having debates about without these articles being written. So just because you don't think someone's going to read it doesn't mean you shouldn't write it. Please, if you have thoughts in your head, get it out onto something get it out onto media in some way because if you if you read his what he wrote it's very thoughtful and he does a really good job of bringing in a lot of different perspectives and a lot of different angles and giving what i would consider to be a more um you know more honest kind of a, a, a look at it than than i think you get from a lot of other parties but we you know we need more and more people like 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 christopher basically you know stepping out and and, and doing some writing there's a lot of people trying to figure out the stories and yet, you know, the crew of Luis Elizondo, Chris Mellon, and everybody has really gone quiet as of right now. Do you think that they are trying to prepare their next move for what they are going to be doing within the UFO field? Um, you know, honestly, um, uh, you know, uh, if you'd asked me that a year ago, I, I would I would scoff. I would say no. It, it, it's never that planned. It's never that orchestrated. You know, it, it's it's probably a bunch of of, of coincidences and, and just you know, um, you know this and that. But I have to admit, when Elizondo made that comment um, a couple months ago about the fact that you know he had some others had had intentionally slowed down the the delivery of information because they saw it as a benefit to the way it was all being consumed that that really caught me off guard i have to admit like i really didn't expect anything that quite engineered to be going on um from their perspective and um and so you know so you know if i mean if, if that's if if that's how they're playing ball then yeah you know i mean i mean <laughs> yeah i mean it's 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 very frustrating, though. It's 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 just it's it's it yeah. It's it's very 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 frustrating. But you know, I I, I will say that you know, I mean, I, I think that you know, I mean, there's probably multiple reasons why um, they're staying quiet. But my concern is is that you know, it still has something to do with the way they're trying to throttle information. Um, and and the problem is we don't know how many people are involved in that throttling, right? You know, we don't, we don't, we have no idea how, you know, is it sort of thing where, you know, it's only, you know, Elizondo and, and Chris Mellon and, um, and say, you know, three other people that are involved in this curtailing of information and everyone else still runs roughshod or it, are, are there actually individuals that have enough influence that they can actually reach out to 10, 15, 20 different people and suggest that things get slowed down for some reason. I don't know. You know, I mean, I think what happens here, John, and please correct me if I'm wrong. I think once the president signs the bill and it is official, then I hope we're going to get some major questions answered or asked by the mainstream media. I think this is the calm before the storm on what's going to happen with the media. I mean, great that UFOs are in there. People have picked it up. People have kind of alluded to it. 
But a lot of the reporters, I don't think, have really read into it the fact that there is not going to be any outside public support for these these UFO reports. We're not going to be getting anything and everything the way it was built up by many in the UFO field. I mean, there are a lot of holes to poke in this NDAA. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. No, I mean, that, that's, that's the thing that's so bloody frustrating is that, you know, we were, we were, we were so far away from where we needed, need to be. We were just, we were so far away on so many different levels that we can make these huge leaps. I mean, cause let's face it, this, 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 this bill is a huge leap. I mean, it really is. I mean, it, it has a lot of really, really good stuff in it, but you're dead on. It still leaves a ton of gaps and it leaves a, it leaves a, a it leaves a lot of wanting for sure. Right. Because let's face it, you know, it, some of those, um, you know, some of those, uh, yeah, it's, uh, some of those holes, you know, can be, um, you know, happenstance, but they can also be places where people drive you know, trucks through them and, and are able to get around all sorts of policy and so forth. And, um, you know, I, I think a lot of this is going to depend, sadly, on what type of budget it gets. Right. Like how much money we're we really talking about. The more money, the better. The more well, money involved, the more people pay attention. Bob McGuire was saying on social media the other day, and I don't know how true this is, but the, the numbers that he is hearing is a billion dollars. So that is... That's interesting. So that... Uh, okay, so that that is that is probably what I would consider to be basement what they need. Um, and that is enough to attract a fair amount of attention, but it's not enough to, you really got to get into that 10 billion and up mark to, to really, you know, attract a lot of the sharks sort of thing. Right. So, um, a billion dollars that, that will fund them for a while. Um, they could do a lot of good with that. A lot of good. A ton of I good. think they wow. can too. I think they can too. It's just I mean, a matter of. I mean, they got to have some setup money, which is obvious what they are going to be doing. They need setup money. Because I mean, ima imagine, imagine, and I mean, you know, you, you got a hint of this when with um, um, with um, uh, Kelly and, and and some of these guys talking about you know different approaches they took. But you know, if you were to put the right group of scientists on one of these one of these projects, and you were to really take the handcuffs off, and you were to say, look you know, like, like Jurassic Park, you know, we spared no expense, you know, just go nuts, right? Just instrument whatever you want, however deep you want, log whatever you want, like just go nuts. Um, man, I, I think there's a couple things we could nail down real fast. I think there's a couple things we could knock down real, real fast, you know, and some of it's, some of it's stuff that's not even going to take a scientist to figure out. I think, I think this whole Fitbit thing is, is, is a big deal. I really do. I, I really do. I really think this whole Fitbit thing is a big deal. I think it's a like basically if 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 I if there is like a if if there is like a like a UFO security guy, like he should be fired because the fact that they're actually letting people onto these vessels with Fitbits, if, if that's really what's happening, that's um that's a huge security issue, and um and that's that's hardcore data. I mean that's that's but that's the kind of data we need, and that's you I mean that that that's the kind of data that's really gonna to me. That that kind of Fitbit data, uh, you start you start uh, correlating that with phone data, and you could that to me seems like it's going to that to me seems like it could be as big of a deal as as for example the the Navy videos are, because now you have now you have that same relationship of of experience to data point, but for normal people that you did then for pilots and and radar. Very then true. you have real real telemetry. You have real telemetry. And I was happy to hear um, Bob say uh, a lot, uh, a lot, I think it was last night. Last night Bob was on. Uh, say that he he's planning on looking into that, um, looking into the math of, of those um, uh, of, of that of that Fitbit data. So I know it's something he's planning on looking into himself. Um, it, it's to me that's just like, and the thing is that that's just the tip of the iceberg. I mean, there's a there's a bunch of other devices out there. Like like for example, pacemakers. Pacemakers collect a certain amount of data. There's a lot of machines that go into people's bodies that collect data. 
How many people get abducted to have those devices in them? What are those devices talking about? What do they experience? You know, I think there's a lot, a lot of data that might be sitting around the table that we haven't even touched yet. Well, that's the big thing right there. There's a lot of data. We got to be able to figure out where that data is coming from, where we can push it. John, you know, as we move forward here and, and start to look at the the end of 2021, what what is your favorite story of this year? Keisha. Explain that one for people who didn't hear it. So the um, the uh, the musician Keisha um, was uh, on tour and um, uh, uh, caught wind of uh, the fact that they were getting near um, 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 they, w- w- no what base were they near? They were near um, they were at Wright Patterson. Right, right, Patterson. Yeah, Wright Patterson. Near Wright Patterson. And she screams and basically demands that the that the coach, you know, that the van like detour to this base. They luckily are able to call ahead with their you know limited amount of influence and arrange a tour for her. So they're met at the gate. They're you know given badges and ushered in. And long story short, at some point during the um, during the uh, uh, tour, Keisha had evidently been voicing her dis- disdain with the way the tour was going. And the fact that they weren't giving her the actual information and she wanted to see the bloody aliens right, sort of thing. Right. And um, at one point she took off running. She bolted like full on exit stage left, like, like gone and bolted and ran toward the secured area of the base. And, um, and, you know, uh, Stephen Greenstreet, who, you know, many of you know, was there. He was the one filming it. So he's chasing her with a camera and uh he's thinking i'm gonna get shot you know and and uh, and she's right and she runs right up to this big hangar in the secured area and starts banging on the door screaming show me the aliens i want to see those aliens and you know if we could just get you know a third of america to show a third of that passion disclosure would have happened a long time ago I mean, I mean, think about, think about, I mean, forget how she did it. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Maybe not the best method for, 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 for dislodging for disclosure out of, out of, out of a stone mountain. Right. But I mean, the passion that she, that she expressed doing what she did, that was huge. That was huge. Much respect, much respect for Keisha. That, like, like I said, you, you get, you get a third of the people to give a third of that energy and and it would all be different it would all be totally different um you know it's it's um um but you know but i mean you're talking to someone who's you know probably all-time favorite story is the pancake story so i i typically go for the weird ones you are a weird one my friend you are a weird one well you know what i know you're going to be hanging out for the after show here absolutely coming up here in just a little bit but uh, you know what? Always a pleasure, my friend. And we yep. will talk to you very soon. Yep, yep, yep.